Hi everyone, this is Yorel and today we will learn to do k-means clustering with Excel. Have you ever wondered how data scientists group similar data points together for analysis? That's where k-means clustering comes in. K-means clustering is a popular machine learning technique used to group data points into clusters based on the similarity. It's a powerful tool that can help us make sense of complex data sets and identify hidden patterns that might not be immediately obvious. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into k-means clustering with Excel, but why in Excel and not in Python? While Python is a popular language for machine learning, it can sometimes be overwhelming for beginners. When it comes to learning k-means clustering, starting with Excel can be great to gain a solid understanding of the algorithm concepts and mechanics. With Excel, you see the results of each step of the algorithm in a clear and visual way. So let's begin. Here is our data set. We have the name of the customers, the total purchase, and the yearly revenue. And we want to understand if there are some clusters where we can get these customers and treat them to segment them and then to apply different offers and techniques for selling them our products. Okay, we make a scatter plot with this data and we already see that we have like three clusters. We have here is the purchase, here is the revenue. So we have one cluster with the low purchase and low uh, yearly revenue, one with the big revenue and low purchase and one with the big revenue and big purchase. Okay, and we want to know, for example, this customer, is it better to be here in this cluster or here? And this one also, is it better to be here or here? So this algorithm segment our customers and with, with a step-by-step -step method, each customer will be included in one of the customers and one of the clusters, sorry. And then we can apply marketing techniques on an individual cluster. We will do this exercise with two variables, but you can have multiple ones. We can see here this nice plot because we have only two variables, but if we would have have three, we would need a 3D plot, which is uh, uh, not so easy to interpret. But from four variables on, you can no longer visualize it. So you do not uh, have to rely on visualizing in a graph. You have to rely on the algorithm that I will present you in a second. So let's start finding the clusters. The number of clusters uh, is up to you. Uh, there is a method for finding the best number of clusters. Uh, there are two methods, the elbow method and the silhouette method. I will not be presenting them in this video because it will be too long, but you need to know that if you don't know the number of clusters that you will like to have in your data set, you can try this method. But in general, you don't have to have too many clusters because it will be not easy to, to execute the marketing strategy. So I have chosen three clusters and the whole idea with this algorithm is to find the center of the cluster and then to measure the distance from each individual point to the center of the clusters, okay? And the idea is to minimize this sum of the measures, the distances between each member and the center of the cluster. And when you have minimized the distance, then you have a clear cluster and you have each individual member uh, aligned with the cluster. So let's see our data. So we have the name, total purchase, yearly revenue. Then what we do, we normalize the total purchase and the uh, yearly revenue. 
what is this normalization? When you have different scales, you have to make a pre-processing step, which is the standardizing of the variables. Okay, it involves transforming the variables to have uh, a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. This is done by subtracting the mean of each variable, uh, mu is the mean, and then dividing it with the standard deviation. This is the formula for the standardization. It is the same formula for the z-score. So, when we have different scales, we need to standardize because the k-means algorithm is based on the concept of distances between data points. When variables have different scales, their contribution to the overall distance between points can be skewed. Variables with larger values will dominate the distance calculation, leading to bias clustering result. That's why we will apply this formula to these two columns. And in Excel, we have a standardized formula. Okay, and the standardized formula is like this. You have the uh, data point, then the average of the uh, column, and then the standard deviation of that column. Okay, and then you, you drag it down and each of them is normalized. Here in yearly revenue, the same, we standardize it. The next step is to uh, set the center of the cluster. Uh, first time it is done uh, arbitrarily, okay, randomly, and then we will use solver to minimize this distance between the points. Okay, here I have made uh, another chart with the normalized value. You see that this chart is uh, similar with this one because in our data, we do not have these uh, very different scales. Uh, but uh, in other case, in other cases, you need to standardize. In our uh, data set is not mandatory, but I have shown you in order to uh, know this step. So what we do, we choose a center for cluster one, two, and three. Okay, for cluster one, we will put the zero, zero center, okay, here. And then what we must do, we calculate the Euclidean distance between each point, okay, each point, and uh, the center of the cluster. What is the Euclidean distance? It is a measure of how far apart two points are in space, like here, object one, object two. In the context of k-means clustering, it's a way to measure the similarity between data points. Okay, to calculate the Euclidean distance, you measure the distance between each pair of corresponding coordinates of the two points, square the differences, sum them up, and then take the square root of the result. Okay, this is what you learn in mathematics in the fifth grade, I think. Okay, so here we calculate the distance uh, from the cluster one. Okay, and we have d2 minus q2, okay, so normalize total purchase from this name a to the cluster 1, uh, raised by the power of 2, plus e2 minus r2, okay, the yearly revenue of the cluster 1, okay, raised by the power of 2, and then... Um, you have the square root and then you have the result. So we measure the, the distance uh, to each of the three clusters and then we here calculate the minimum distance. Okay, and each name will have a minimum distance. And then we allocate based on the where is the minimum distance, we allocate the cluster for e each name. Okay. We use this index and match, and we see here the minimum is cluster one, 
A is allocated to cluster 1. Okay, here the minimum is cluster 3 is allocated to cluster 3. Let me freeze this. And the next step would be to calculate the distances within each cluster. Okay, so we uh, sum the minimum distance in each cluster with sum if. Okay, and we have this. Here we calculate the total distance, this tree, and now the idea would be to minimize this total distance, and in this way, each customer will be allocated to the optimal cluster. How we do this? We use solver, data solver. Okay, I already have this field. So, set objective is this, okay, Q. 12 total distance to be minimum by changing variable sales this tree okay q2 r4 and subject to constraints okay how uh, what will be the interval for the center of the cluster they should be uh, around the range of the variables, okay, of the nor normalized one. And we see here, if we look what is the minimum, what is the maximum, we see that uh, it is uh, no bigger than 4, okay, no less than that minus 4. Okay, and then uh, we we do not have to have non-negative, we uh, uncheck this and we use the evolutionary algorithm because we have, uh, we, we do not have linear uh, equation here, we have figures raised to power and then squared and so on, we, we use the evolutionary and now we press solve. And I will pause this and get back when the solver finished. So again, okay, these are the changing variable cells and we have here the constraints, the same, okay? We press solve. And now it's calculating. You see that it starts from 35 with our random centers and now it is close to 13, but it's still working. So now we have our result, the total distance is minimum 13. And now we have the correct allocation of the customers. You see that it's already slightly different, the clustering allocation. So now the last step will be to make a pivot table. And uh, we, we put here the, the cluster and then we put the average of total purchase, average of yearly revenue. And now we start to, to think what does this mean? For example, here we have cluster one, uh, a low total purchase and a low yearly revenue. So maybe for this group of customers, we can um, implement a financing solution uh, to make it easier for them to buy our products. Then we have cluster 2 with an average purchase which is also low but a big revenue. So maybe for this category of customers we may implement some special offers okay, to lure them to our stores or to our site. And then we have the cluster three with big total purchase and big yearly revenue. These are the big fish. Okay, so we must take uh, great care for these customers because they are our biggest source of revenue. So in short, this is the K-means clustering that helps you segment your customers. I hope you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you.